And a federal judge has now sentenced former Representative Rick Renzi to three years behind bars. The former GOP congressman served in Arizona's first district for five years between 2003 and 2008. At the time of his indictment, Renzi held a coveted seat on the House Intelligence Committee. However, that year he decided not to seek re-election. Fast forward to June of 2013, when Representative Renzi was convicted on 17 of 32 corruption counts. He was found guilty on two sets of charges, the first embezzlement in which the representative was found to be funneling client funds, funds from his insurance brokerage into his election campaign, and the second, a charge of conspiracy. Acting Assistant Attorney General Maithili Rahman of the Justice Department's Criminal Division said, quote, Mr. Renzi abused the power and the corresponding trust that comes with being a member of Congress by putting his own financial interests over the interests of the citizens. Well, here to break down this case and what implications it may have, I'm joined by Melanie Sloan, Director of Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington. Melanie, thank you so much for joining me. So first of all, just break down uh, what, what really happened here. Talk about specifically the land swap between Rep. Renzi and um, his business associate. Sure. This was the bigger part of the case, the one that really implicated uh, abuse of the public trust. Uh, Mr. Renzi used his position in Congress to insist that the Resolution Trust Copper Mine purchase land uh, from uh, represent from Mr. Sandlin in order for Mr. Sandlin to pay back a debt that he owed to Representative Renzi. And the Resolution Trust Company didn't wasn't really that interested in this land. They were in initially interested in making a land swap for some other land, uh, but then Renzi kept pushing this land and then he wanted it to be valued at a much higher price than it was worth. And eventually somebody from the Resolution Trust Company went to federal prosecutors and told them about what was going on in this case. Representative Renzi then fought this case tooth and nail for really seven years. It went all the way up to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. They tried to go to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court turned down the case, uh, and it has been winding its way through the courts. And, and frankly, it's just uh, it, it's not very satisfying to see him get only three years in jail for such a flagrant abuse and, of power. And, and I want to get to that. Well, ultimately, how did he get caught before we get any further? Because that's one thing I haven't been able to understand. Sure. He got caught because people went to the Justice Department. People told the Justice Department what was going on, that they thought that there were problems with what Representative Renzi was doing that they felt pressured to engage in this land swap so people from the resolution trust company went to went to justice and of course going off of what you were just talking about you know prosecutors asked for 12 years of course the defense said he doesn't need to serve any time in jail so what do you think about this three-year sentence I mean give us some perspective is that is that enough no, I think three years is, is a pretty light sentence given the pr fairly egregious facts in this case. Uh, in two other cases in which members of Congress have gone to jail in recent years, one involving uh, Duke Cunningham, a uh, re representative from California, and another involving William Jefferson from Louisiana, both of those members who were involved in illegal activity that also involved money coming into their personal pockets, uh, they received uh, 10 and 8 years respectively. So Representative Renzi getting merely three years is, is a very low sentence. I think the judge may have taken into account there were some problems in the prosecution's case. There were questions about whether the FBI had engaged in some improper activity. But one thing I will say is that, that Judge David Bury uh, said that uh, Mr. Renzi and Mr. Sandlin, who engaged in these activities, were good men who did bad things. And I will right. say that I think it's pretty rare for a, a judge to, to give the defendants who've been fighting tooth and nail and refusing to take responsibility for their criminal behavior uh, so much the benefit That's of the doubt. That was interesting. I was going to ask you, do you think that the fact that this took place in Arizona, of all places, had anything to do with it, a historically Republican state, we're dealing with a Republican congressman. Do you think that had anything to do with it? or You know, I think that the judge uh, seemed to be um uh, affected by the fact that this was a former congressman who was well had once been well respected in the state. Uh, the uh, congressman's family pushed that he was a family man with lots of kids, a man of faith. Uh, but rarely will you see other criminal defendants getting the same kind of benefit of the doubt when they have done something so blatantly illegal. I mean, most people, if they're caught red-handed like Renzi is, and he never took responsibility again, usually these lighter sentences are handed down when somebody accepts responsibility for their action, when they plead guilty and they say, yeah, you know, I did something wrong, and here was the bad circumstance, and here's why I did this bad thing. But Representative Renzi is still fighting it. He's still saying they're going to appeal again to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. So they're not done yet. 
And, and you mentioned the role of the FBI in all of this, and perhaps that's why he had uh, such a light sentence. Can you talk about the misconduct? Uh, to what extent did it, did it go to? Well, so some of the problems were about the great amount of confusion that exists when a member of Congress is prosecuted. There's a portion of the Constitution called the Speech or Debate Clause, and this is very complicated, but basically it says that members of Congress can't be questioned about things in the legislative sphere. And when the FBI was doing its investigation of Representative Renzi, they were listening to some of his phone calls, and they were overhearing material that they weren't supposed to listen to. And the judge was very troubled by that, and, and much of that was thrown out of, uh, of court. And in fact, that is the issue that first went up to the Ninth Circuit, uh, questions about the extent of the speech or debate clause defense. Absolutely. And, you know, it's interesting. I just want you to expound a little bit more on that. Like, what's the rationale behind, uh, you know, behind the speech or debate yeah, clause? Yeah, I mean, just I, I just can't believe that this act was actually used. I yeah. Mean, that they tried well, the to speech or debate clause was, uh, is actually comes, uh, it's an original part of the Constitution, and it was a, an important part of making sure that our members of Congress were independent from the executive branch, that the executive branch couldn't just come in and say, arrest members of Congress so that they could be forced to do the executive branch's bidding. So it had some, uh, it had some good reasons for its enactment, but in recent years, it's been expanded a great deal. We saw uh, an expansion of the use of the clause actually in the case of the prosecution of William Jefferson that we saw uh, before the prosecution of Representative Renzi. And some people may remember that uh, Representative Jefferson, uh, his congressional office was searched by the FBI. And this brought to uh, a big court case as well. And, and this has played into the case involving Representative Renzi. So I think we're not through with seeing the use of the speech or de uh, debate clause used by members of Congress to basically hide their misconduct. And of course, no other, nobody else can get away with that. This is something that's particular to members of Congress and, and sometimes House and uh, leg state legislators. Absolutely. And in the case of former Majority Leader Tom DeLay, um, obviously he repealed and he was acquitted. Um, yeah, obviously he won his case. Rep. Renzi is now saying that he's going to appeal. Do you think it's at all possible that he might actually escape this? Man. I think it is very unlikely. Uh, the case against Representative DeLay was very different than the case involving uh, Representative Renzi. The main difference, and, and I am no fan of Representative DeLay, but Representative Renzi was taking money into his personal pocket, and Representative DeLay was not involved in that kind of activity. He was funneling money into campaigns, into, right. into, into the Republican the, Party. Into the Republican and, Party. So I think it is a very different matter, and we're also talking the difference between federal law and Texas state law. Okay. Well, we'll definitely have to keep our eyes peeled for what happens next with this case. But Melanie Sloan, thank you so much for coming on, Director of Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington. Thank Thanks. you.